This is called choosing metal. And I guess it's an al alchemical form in some ways. If anybody's into alchemy still. <laughs> uh, there was a time when, you know, um, what I liked about the alchemists is that they told people, uh, you know, public consumption, that their business was uh, turning, you know, junk into gold. But that's not what they really did. They were about two other things, you know. One was they were looking for the secret of life. And the other was that they knew how to turn words into gold. They, they were, their patrons were kings. <laughs> anyway, uh, that had nothing to do with this poem. It's called Choosing Metals. This child and the moon are not speaking. She has no use for it if it's not silver. She prefers sleep to sunshine. Her choice of metals is natural. She prefers silver to presents. Her wristwatch and the key are gold colored. She dares not use them. The child never wants milk on her jello. She cries, this is too precious for just dessert. But really, it's nothing. Guilt. No longer the feather she used to be. Her breath still sings. But her head on my pajama sleeve is heavy with confused determination and vague hurt. My heart, a stone cast in a lake, catching a sudden freeze, prisoning the stone half in, half out, rings of ice which won't melt. The rarity of what we felt seems done in the morning's radiance when we wake. She's unsure of my silence as she chats about the weather. But all I want to talk about would be unspeakable things. This is called uh, Sketches of Susan. <laughs> She tilts her head to hear the light, which flows like her hair billows, turns around. Bob Hilton has a Betty Davis style, hands in your gaze's consideration, hands in her pockets, tilting her head. Now you see her, now you don't understand what you've seen her now. A fragment of a simple pose she wears. This one, the girl from the plains. This one, the small town has feet. Her heart in Venice with a Biennale. A debutante refusing to come out. Now you see her here touching a child with glee and wonder that all creation exists inside the child, inside her caring glance. And now suppose that she pretends to be a pose, a modern woman, which is completely a shrug, that is a shrug, a long step gait, and a turn, hands and pockets, Betty Davis style, Mary Cassatt style, studying the people at large in their own moments, painting their postures. But this one, this one who is not Cassatt, he bring their eyes to herself, giving them ordinary representational eyes, only because portraits have eyes. She gives them eyes. He bring all hope, all sorrow, pretense, pain, all joy and wonder in those gazes for herself, to spill the postures that those eyes dictate. She herself poses every time she paints. And if I were a poet, I'd pose her in two words. I'd make them up. I'd pose her that way. <laughs> and that way too. Live, gyroscopic. The self-portrait Mary Cassatt somehow just didn't paint. I'd pose her turning, smiling at the sky, shaking her head inside a cotton field, touching a child with wonder like a wand. Being a modern woman as she sees it, which really she, like all of them, really don't see. Don't see that our lives are mere charades with constant wonder and surprises we might have seen coming and got the better of them. But I, like Frank O'Hara, am no painter, and I fumble to offer no portrait, just sketches of Susan, as sometimes I see her, in two words, to show what a poor poet I am, lies gyroscopic. Hearing light. 
Is there some old song that says it? Some poem, some set of tones that paints a portrait in the light in the way that light punches through windows into the space of our poses, our body style in such light as if we were posing the one possible portrait that can possibly tell all generations. So there, hands and pockets turning. That's who they were. <laughs> she's inside now. Inside her room, she's made a garden of her plants, her space, her portraits filled with love. Moving like a diamond stylus in a song of light which flows around and through her from her hand, returning to our eyes the gift of what she sees so well she tilts her head to hear. Portraits have eyes. And let's see, this is a, this is also a portrait. This is a portrait of Fred, a wonderful poet. Um, from New Orleans, uh, Tom Dent. And Tom Dent was, uh, in addition to being a poet, he was a, he was a, a cultural activist. Everything he was involved in in his entire life was about changing things so that they would be better than they are. And he believed he could actually do that through poetry, through music, talking to people to do whatever it is you engage yourself in your entities. Anyway, this poem is uh, in memory of Tom Dan. He died a couple years ago. Um, it's called Discovering America Again. <coughs> the world we found was not something to fall in love with, but there were people in it who watched us at our games, who warned us early African veneers and European valences could be both false and polished surfaces distracted. Armed us with corny maxims, pride is not assumed, but earned by effort properly applied. Common sense, Garvey, Washington, you one of them. Du Bois, were men, like those you meet in the street, and sent us on the way, expecting us to be explorers, space travelers in song, screaming or mellow in caravans of ageless aspiration, to memorize exuberant manifests of semi-precious words. Discovering America again, we found the simplest of all mysteries called speech retains the register of fear. Encountering what we do not know we know disguised as other people. They are still there, those watchers, watching you discovering America again. Don't be afraid. Someone has walked this way before, all the world's music in her hands, under the starlight that she wished could lead away to freedom, or at least a space to be as a newborn as tomorrow, or given as today. Someone has walked this way before who learned the secret. Someone has walked this way before, a man who knew that speech, his breath, made lovely, shaped, and shaping volume expanding both inside and out in the quick transfer of sight and feeling into sound and sense sometimes. <laughs> Someone has walked this way before, my friend, who was my friend, a man who spoke with people, who asked you questions so that you could breathe. 